Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name is Jason Newland This is Relaxation Hypnosis for Stress, Anxiety and Panic Attacks Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes If you'd like to support this free service Please go to paypal.me forward slash jasonnewland and you can help by sending a PayPal gift which will cover the costs of running the podcast and the website and all that stuff. Thank you very much. So, um, and also all my recordings are available on my website. There's about 1,500 recordings from there's relaxation sessions, Sleep, insomnia recordings, chronic pain relief, stop smoking, various different things. So I wanted to talk about I wanted to talk about a few things, and um, but probably the main thing, and I don't got no idea where I'm going to go with this. If I'm honest with you, is I wanted to talk about the coronavirus. I don't want to talk about the coronavirus itself, but the effect that the coronavirus, uh, the constant uh, press, internet, social media, news, all that stuff, the bombardment, the... um, I don't know what the correct word would be, but it's just, it's constant. And it's been going on for quite a while now, and it doesn't look like it's going to be calming down anytime soon, as far as the um, the attention, the focus on this issue. And... My concern goes to it goes to people that have got it and people that are suffering, but specifically people that have anxiety issues and people out there maybe listening to this that already have enough to deal with when it comes to germs, you know, to phobias and things like that with germs. And I was thinking about it and the whole idea of, you know, anxiety attack being the, you know, fight, flight or freeze is kind of our natural reaction in the with the introduction of something that may cause us harm physical harm for example or emotional harm so it used used to be called fight or flight but then you know the fact is that freeze is something that often, often happens where the person can't do anything. They can't run away. They can't fight back. They freeze. And I've done that myself in the past. And I often wondered why they always called it, why it was always called fight or flight. Well, what about when you just stand there and you do nothing? Or, you know, you don't know what to do. Kind of everything kind of stops working as it were so the whole point of well not the whole point but the idea of an anxiety attack or you know panic attack being 
I don't know, kind of uh, an ex a response, but an exaggerated response to a situation which actually isn't harmful. That's quite often what anxiety attacks, panic attacks are connected to in people's minds. But the reality is that we get anxious at things that really are serious as well. So the idea that we're just, we're only getting anxious for no reason and having an exaggerated response when actually there's nothing to be scared of, that might be the case at times. It may be an exaggerated response at times and it may be a situation where there is no chance or very practically a, you know, zero chance of that thing happening. But it's your mind, you know, getting carried away, causing your body to respond in that uh, horrible, anxious manner. But actually, as well as that, there are times when we are in danger or we are experiencing a really bad situation. And it's hard to prepare for that stuff because we're not all in the army or in the forces or we're not all military trained or in the police who are trained to deal with emergency situations. I don't know what to do in an emergency situation. I've dealt a couple of times in those things, but I wasn't very good. So I suppose where I'm going with this is we've got the coronavirus and it's a real thing. It is a real threat. So then I've noticed my anxiety going up. And I can't just say to myself, well, I'm just worrying about nothing. Well, if it's nothing, why is it on telly 24 hours a day? Why are all the schools closed? Why, why you know, it's, it's why is it taking over the entire country? You know, every, every aspect of the country, flights, everything's now being um, affected by this virus. Just in my country, that's without all the other countries in the world. So it's, it, it's getting hard to di- harder to dismiss the anxiety. So it feels like in this situation it's about coping with it or coping with the situation so that the anxiety doesn't arise. Because I found myself getting heart palpitations. I thought, you know, I'm watching the news and almost feel like I'm losing my breath. And I'm going out to the supermarket and I'm literally, I feel like I've got tentacles sticking out my head, like high alert. You know, who's got the germs? Who's got the germs? Who's got the... Who's got the plague? Who's got it? You know? Should I be near them? Can I keep away from them? Do I need to face the other way? Who's coughing? And that kind of stuff, which... Apart from being extremely unpleasant, I imagine that's what a lot of people, to a certain extent, are actually experiencing those with or without anxiety issues. And those without generally having anxiety issues will possibly be having anxiety issues now because of this uh, current virus that's going around that has 
seems to have taken over the world temporarily. So maybe we need to keep hold of the word temporarily because it is a temporary blip. It's quite a big blip at the moment as far as the disruption it's causing people, jobs, all that stuff. And this topic is it's too big really to kind of talk about in a recording. It's too big, the whole extended situation regarding you know things that could cause someone anxiety outside of the the germ situation the will I catch it will I give it to somebody because you know if you with if you've got relatives that are elderly that you care about you, you know that could be that anxiety will I lose someone that I care about and then there's other bits. Will I lose my job? Will I be able to pay the rent? Will I be able to pay the mortgage? All, all those kinds of things. And I, I seem to find, and I, this might not be the same for everyone, i found that I've almost taken on a degree of worry on behalf of other people. You know, worried about people that I've not even met. Worried about businesses. Um, worried about people that are in other countries that can't get home. You know, those kinds of things. I mean, the other day, I think they said, I think it was today or yesterday, that only five people are allowed at a church funeral service now. No more than five people in the Church of England. And I started feeling upset for the people who are not allowed to go to a funeral. Because five people is not a lot for someone that's got a big family. You know, someone might have seven children or five children, grandchildren, they're all gonna to wanna to go to the funeral. So now I can't start, I find myself getting a little bit upset with that and a little bit angry. And then I kind of feel guilty for feeling angry. It's a little bit of a weird kind of various different emotions going on. And then at the supermarket when I was getting some food, normally do a, you know, a fortnightly shop which is a big well, it's a fairly big shop I do it every fortnight and I was feeling guilty for food I was buying I'm buying too much stuff here but it's what I always do you know I go out I don't go out very often so I get paid every two weeks and I go and buy my food <laughs> it's just and the the people some people looked angry there was uh, such a negative energy around, including the shop, the people working in the shop. Not that they were always necessarily, you know, smiling all day long, but they were really drained. You could, I could just see that they were drained. They were so tired because of the amount of work they've had to do. And. So this, the anxiety, to me, it seems that only, I can only speak, well, I can't really speak on behalf of my country, but I'm focusing on what I've seen here, and you're going to know what it's like where you are. There's a huge amount of anxiety all around. Most of the people that I've spoken to are anxious about it except old people for some reason. The ones I've spoken to four people over 70 and they were all arrogant. All very arrogant, blase, didn't care. And I found that quite surprising <laughs> considering they're the, 
the, the group that could be mostly at risk. But there's just four people. It doesn't mean that's, that's not necessarily a, a good example, but all of them like absolutely not bothered, not interested at all, which I found very, very unusual. Yet a lot of young people are, maybe not the young, young people, but people in the middle, you know, thirties, forties, are taking it seriously. I'm not sure how seriously older took it when I was in my early twenties or my teens. I probably wouldn't care. Mind you, I was a bit of a worrier, so I don't know. It's hard to tell. There's no way of knowing, is there? It's just down to the personal character of each individual, really, I guess. Whether they're concerned for others or for themselves. So kind of, I suppose it makes me think just, you know, when I say be kind to yourself, what can you, me, us, they, all of us do to be kind to ourselves during this coronavirus situation? And I don't know what the answer is for you personally, because only you can really come up with that answer. I would suggest looking after yourself. Being kind to yourself would be doing what you need to do to keep yourself safe. And I suppose there's a little part of me, it's only a small part, that thinks well, maybe more people will start to understand what it's like to have anxiety, that like real, you know, uh, physically painful, you know, uncomfortable um, anxiety. I'm not, I'm not pleased they've got it, but I, I kind of think it may be those people now that are worried, really, really anxious and concerned about what's going to happen with this. Maybe when this is all done, they'll have a bit more understanding for those people that live with this condition ongoing. So, you know, I had a friend who, he got depressed a few years back. And it's the first time he even had uh, any kind of understanding about depression. Even though I was his good friend and I had gone through depression quite a few times. Didn't get it, didn't, couldn't comprehend it. But once he went through it himself, and of course it's different for everybody, but he had respect, had a degree of respect for uh, maybe other people that have gone through it, realized how painful it was for him. So therefore it makes sense that it would have been painful for other people as well. You know, just because it's, it's one of those invisible things, isn't it, for other people can't see it. Although you can kind of see depression in people by the way they act, their behavior, the way they talk, the things they say. There's a lot of clues. It's not that invisible, not really, if you know the person, because they won't be the same as how they normally are if you've known them for a long time. Just in the same way as anxiety, you can't see it but the behavior's different. People act differently when they're anxious. They talk differently. Maybe talk faster. Maybe pace. Maybe look around, eyes darting everywhere. It could be all kinds of things. Maybe sweating. 
maybe just not being able to physically relax or be able to focus on a conversation. So it can be noticeable from outside. You don't have to have a plaster on your leg for someone to see, you know, see that you're in pain. So this, I guess it's concerning me, uh, this whole virus thing that's going on in I just I feel for people that are suffering, not just the people suffering with the coronavirus and um, the anxiety it causes, but there's kind of an extra uh, caring or concern for those that are already dealing with anxiety on a daily basis, to have this extra thing added on. And for someone with, uh, let's say, OCD or, you know, real phobia for germs. And, you know, part of the, part of the treatment to help someone with, that has a, a germ phobia would be to convince them in some way that there's nothing to be afraid of that the germs won't hurt them. How do you do that when you've got something out there that actually can hurt you? Like the coronavirus, it's, it's a real thing. It's invisible as well. So, I don't know, maybe it goes different ways. Maybe someone with a phobia of germs can actually feel not that they're insane but they might feel a bit crazy for having those feelings when everyone else is telling them that there's fine and they've got nothing to worry about but now that other people are worrying about it perhaps they can feel almost the same as everyone else so perhaps there's a I don't want to use the word benefit but if there was such a bit of thing, maybe a benefit in it. Because this is something to be concerned of. And washing your hands, that's the, that's the thing they keep going on about on the news. And I can't believe that the adults need to be told to wash their hands, but clearly we do. I was taught to wash my hands at a very early age, and I continue doing it. But yeah, it's, it's, it amazes me. So we've now got people, I just, I worry how many phone, you know, germ phobias are gonna be caused by this coronavirus. Not so much the coronavirus, but the constant bombardment of information, news uh, you know 24 hours a day of course you can turn your telly off turn the radio off not go online not talk to a single person and I guess that's one way of never knowing what's going on I'm not sure if that's it's quite a difficult way to live I think once you're used to being aware of what's going on to suddenly be completely out of the loop of society maybe that is the way to go I don't know these are just ideas it's just thinking out loud really so what can you do to be kind to yourself to make sure that you can remember that actually although this is a real thing this virus is a real thing how can you 
get more in touch with a sense of relaxation because it seems to me that purposely relaxing is possibly the key moving forward to actually do a regular relaxation exercise every day maybe more than once a day whether it's meditation maybe you do yoga perhaps exercise whatever it is that you do to help you to relax maybe listening to one of my <laughs> relaxation sessions I don't know or whoever just listening to music reading a book watching a Netflix program something that you enjoy doing having a bath we've all got those things where you just feel really relaxed maybe during or after but it's spending more time feeling relaxed and increasing that time as much as possible increasing the time you spend feeling relaxed so perhaps it was half an hour a day before increase it to maybe an hour maybe an hour and a half maybe two hours maybe, perhaps not all in one go but spread out Because at the moment, I think the scales are a bit out of balance, societally out of balance. And I can see already the stress that the average person is experiencing. I can't experience, I can't, but I can see by some of the behavior and things that people have said it's a lot of worrying, a lot of stress connected to the coronavirus by people that maybe don't normally experience uh, stress as a problem. They might, you know, thrive off being stressed and help them to propel forward in their life and they might not experience anxiety and now perhaps they are maybe maybe for the first time by the way if you hear grumblings in my stomach I'm not quite sure why because I've just eaten I think it wants more chocolate So what can you do to actually help your day, each day, going forward, to feel more relaxed, to spend more time, to, in fact, I don't, I don't think it's about balancing the scales. I think it's about tipping the scales over in your favor so that the relaxation you spend more time feeling relaxed than other. More times feeling calmer than not feeling calmer, you know? More time being in your body, being mindful. Maybe experiencing gratitude for what you do have. So I do, you know, it's kind of just this recording's more of a like an open conversation starter in the sense of what can you do to help yourself to deal with what's going on in your own life. And I've, yeah, as I said, I've, I've been struggling with it. A 
little bit. It's been, it's been too much. There has been too much. And it's, I feel it's almost being thrust upon us. You know, the constantness of it. And I know that I can turn the television off, but I'm all, almost, it's got me addicted as well, a little bit, to want to know what's happening next. What's the next change to society that's going to happen today? Because it's just moving so fast. Will the supermarkets be open next week? You know, it's like, what's going to happen next? And and because the anxiety is invisible, even to us, you can feel it, but you can't, can't really see it coming. And I almost feel like it's... It sneaks up on me sometimes and literally takes my breath away. And it's a very, very horrible feeling. And I can normally get it under control. I could normally get it back, get it, get relaxed, do some breathing exercises, do some counting. Sometimes I lie down on the bed and that, that's that's good for me and I start yawning the idea of lying down on my bed's got me yawning but other times I feel and I think this might be part of the bipolar more than anything else is I feel really really um, I was going to say turned on I don't, I don't mean in a sexual way I mean turned on like my brain is completely focused and aware of what's going on and I'm really into it and I'm really into the news and really absorbing all this stuff taking it all in and I want to know more and more and more when yeah I know that's not really very helpful or healthy and then I crash you know, I just have too much and I have to go and lie down and go to sleep. But again, that might be more to do with the bipolar than to do with anxiety uh, per se. And I know these recordings aren't really about bipolar, but it's about mental health issues. It's about being getting mentally well and dealing with mental illness and the anxiety, stress side of things but it's also there for people that are temporarily experiencing it as well which is what's happening I believe I'm only guessing but I think it's a pretty good educated guess there's a lot of people and I'm talking millions of people around the world that are now at quite a high anxiety level when perhaps they don't normally have that. It might be the first time for a lot of people that they felt this on edge or this anxious. Part of that is the uncertainty, uh, not enough information, and at the same time, too much information. It's kind of a mixture between the two. You can't, you can't win, can you really? It's too much information, but at the same time, there's always more you want to know. Because how does it affect you and your family personally? How does it affect your job, your health, your finances? So it's, it's, it's a big thing, but it's temporary. It's temporary. And that's something I think we could all find useful, including myself, to remember it's just temporary. Regardless of what happens, it's going to be temporary.
and maybe maybe knowing that other people out there have also got anxiety that there's more people out there probably at this time outside of a war you know um, probably a world war to be fair this is probably the one time one of those times in history where the anxiety level will be much higher in huge amounts of people around the world some parts of the country perhaps not that bothered at the moment because it hasn't affected them as much but other countries like Italy for example huge I bet there's not an Italian one person in Italy that's not been affected by this emotionally so there's a huge amount of anxiety out there So another way to reduce your anxiety could be to send out love to those people. And I don't mean in a lovey-dovey, gushy, airy-fairy, you know, spiritual way. I just mean physically. You know, if your eyes closed, actually send out love from your heart to them let it spread you can choose a person you can choose a family or you can go all out and choose a a whole country it doesn't have to be your country why not choose another country why not choose if you're in England why not choose Iran or you know Italy, Spain if you're in China maybe choose America because if nothing else this can start to break down some of those barriers and allow more people to see other people for what they are which is just human beings humans and you women <laughs> you hear women you men you know I mean humans instead of by the religion or their belief systems or by the color of their skin or the language they speak or where they live you know because this virus is not prejudice it's not racist it's not sexist it seemed to be a bit ageist to be fair because it seems to be going for the older people but it's you know it, everyone can get it so in a sense we can kind of stand together at least emotionally and by sending that love out to another country and you can imagine it moving from your chest and the thing is when you send out that love it never depletes you you can say it doesn't deplete you it completes you but that just rhymes doesn't it it doesn't deplete the love it increases it just like you know when you give blood uh, was it how many do we have seven pints of blood in our body I don't know how many we have but you give two pints or a pint of blood to you know in a what's it a blood donor place it doesn't mean suddenly you've got a pint of blood less the blood recuperates you you know you could give a blood you give a pint of blood probably every day or every two days I don't know how long it takes to come back but you know the point is it still keeps coming back it still grows it's like when you cut your hair it grows back or you shave your knuckles 
and, and your hairy knuckles grow back. Whatever. So that love, or the or you could give it the word compassion. Maybe by you know thinking about other people and sharing it, and wishing them to be relaxed and calm allows you to feel more relaxed than calm so these these are just a few ideas it's not it's nothing I don't say anything that's gonna necessarily change the world but I thought it'd be nice to at least address the you know the coronavirus and how difficult from an anxiety perspective it is uh, especially for those who are already on a daily basis trying to cope with their own anxiety issues to then add this have this added to it you know But then all those other people that are now anxious about this situation that maybe have never experienced it before. So my heart does go out to those people. It's almost like, you know, just... It's horrible. Worrying about something, not knowing what's going to happen... It's, it can be a horrible situation. But remembering it's temporary. All this stuff will come to an end. Just like the worst storm ever will come to an end. Whether it's a hurricane, whether it's a flood, whether a volcano, whatever, it always ends. Always comes to this, always only temporary. I mean, even the sun's temporary, it will eventually burn out. Not for a long, obviously, a very, very long time, which is not going to affect us. Unless, of course, you're listening to this in a hundred million years or whatever. In that case, told you it's temporary. Told you. So maybe it's something to think about. Maybe it's maybe I've given you nothing to think about. Maybe it's just been a bunch of words. Um, what it has been a bunch of words. But just to remind you, if nothing else, to remind you to look after yourself in these weird times. And they are a bit weird at the moment. And to remind yourself that it's temporary. So I'm going to go and I wish you well. I'm probably going to try to do a, a relaxation session in my next recording. So thank you for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. It's important. Lots of love. Bye.